Um, hi everyone, and, and thanks to uh, thanks for get, uh, the opportunity to present this work. So um, I don't actually have um, many slides. Um, I thought that just the focus would be on the actual shiny application itself, uh, but I do want to give a little bit of background. Um, so the method that I'll be talking about is, is something that myself and, and Arthur, um, my, my supervisor, have uh, published uh, this year. So um, the paper is called Direct Incorporation of Expert Opinion into Parametric Survival Models to Inform Survival Extrapolation. So that was published in Medical Decision Making this year. And, um, but the, the focus of this talk is actually the, the OR package that uh, we developed uh, around this topic. So um, the OR package is, is called Expert Serve. And it's available on CRAN. Um, although I, I should note that the the version which has the shiny app is is kind of a development version. So that's actually on GitHub. So uh, if you wanted to install that version, you you would you would need to load the GitHub package and uh, install the expert serve package with the reference for the, the this branch called Devel. A CRAN final, which is just the kind of updates that I'm making to the to the CRAN version before I actually submit them to CRAN. Um, also, um, to actually run the app, um, you would have to run this code. Um, I mean, if it, any most people here will know that I'm I'm actually using three um, dots here instead of the two. And just because I have an exposed expert serve function to uh, the package yet, because it's still a, a little bit of a, um, a developmental uh, function, and uh, I just kind of, you know, over time I, I I will put it into the full version. But if 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 you want to actually just look at, if you want to run the code and, and play around with it, um, you just need to install the. The development version level version and also uh, install uh, oh, sorry just run this code here um just to give just the tiniest bit of background on uh, expert serve um it's the idea is that we can use it to incorporate expert opinion into survival models so um and there has been other papers that have done work on this but um Typically, we might have a survival curve uh, or some data, and we might ask an expert, uh, what do they think is the survival at a particular time point? Uh, and the idea here is that um, the expert can give their opinion as a probability distribution, and that can be integrated with the actual data. Uh, so the advantage with this is that it integrates with the data relative to the strength of the expert's opinion. Because uh, in my experience before uh, working with expert opinion, a lot of times people would elicit an expert's opinion and say, okay, 10 years, the survival is between 10 and 20%, and then just go and look which of the survival curves have a survival function that's between 10, or sorry, 10 and 20% at let's say 10 years. But that doesn't actually change the data or the, the, the estimation. Uh, so the, the, the strength of this approach is that we, we incorporate both the expert's opinion and the data directly. Um, so the, and the relative strengths of, of both of them are captured. So if you've got lots of data or you've got data which has survival up to a certain time point, um, you know, rather than having a few data points, that, you know, the data gets weighted more. And as well, if your expert opinion is vague, uh, then it's not so important in, in the final estimation. Uh, and then for, for reference, um, if, if, if you want to see how some of the functions work, uh, there's a page here, the GitHub page. Um, also, there's documentation on CRAN as well, uh, which we, we look at expert opinion in a variety of scenarios. Uh, probably the most important one is expert opinion at survival uh, time points. Uh, and it just shows how to, to run this code and, uh, and do the analysis. Um, there's also some discussion on how you might pool um, multiple experts' opinions. Um, and then um, we just show how to run the code and uh, get the um, 
model comparisons based on DIC, uh, PML, uh, a pseudo marginal likelihood, WAIC, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so uh, again, and, and just to give a tiny bit more background, um, we also do the method in evasion and frequentist framework. So uh, the frequentist framework is, is that kind of a penalized maximum likelihood. So um, as I'll show in the Shiny app, uh, we have two options to do this analysis. Um, I think it's pretty useful that we can use the frequentist approach because uh, if we need to get results really quickly, we, we can do that um, because the Bayesian method will take a little bit longer. Um, uh, and then just uh, we can also, as well, uh, some interest might be uh, expert opinion on survival differences. So, um, you know, the expert might want to say that, OK, um, we have a belief that there's five months or five years or whatever, it, it, let's just say five months of a difference in the survival um, between the two arms. And we have a standard deviation of 0.2. I mean, the. These examples in the in, in, in these illustrations are very very contrived. They're, they're they're probably way too informative, but they're just to show that like if you put on an informative uh, expert opinion, then uh, the results will change. Then and that's why you know the standard deviation is 0.2. I don't think in any situation the expert would be that certain. Um, but anyway, in, in this example, we we basically applied um, an expert opinion that there's five months of a difference between these two survival curves. As you can see here, it's, it's, it's changed the survival curve um, so that you know, there is a, a five month difference between the two arms. And yeah, uh, and, that's, and that's kind of pretty much very briefly what the, the package does. And there's lots more information on that. But of course, the, the object of this uh, presentation is to show the uh, shiny package. So I'll start with that now. Um, again, like I said, you would just run this code here. But because I'm using it on a kind of local drive I, 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 and I make changes, I'm just going to run, um, run it from here. So um, just to give a bit of background here, we, we can see here this is the, the app. Um, we can upload Excel uh, data um, to the to the um, to the app, and just as, and this is a standard way. Um, I just want to show you how the the data should really be. But I had that straight here. Um, sorry. Well, anyway, it, it should contain. It should have the following arguments: uh, time, status, and if you want to have two arm trials um, or like an intervention comparison. Sorry, you, you would have to have specify an arm. Um, everything should be in numerics, uh, just so that the, the the it can be read in. If, if there's any like text or anything like that, I'll just put. NA and, and, and it'll actually probably crash. Um, so in, in this time, we, we have uh, the number of experts. Um, we have the number of time points. So this is the time points, so the number of time points at which we want to elicit expert opinion. Um, and this is just for, for plotting purposes. Uh, I mean, just one point, I would uh, keep the number of time points small. I wouldn't put too many time points. The reason for this is because um, the method kind of assumes that the expert uh, opinion is independent of each other at different time points, which it clearly isn't. Um, I mean, that, that, that's something that might need to be a, a kind of focus for future research. But um, ideally, like if you're putting in multiple time points, it should be at, let's say, 20 and 50 months. It shouldn't be at 20 months and 25 months and 30 months. And, Five months. Um, otherwise, you kind of run into problems with respect to, you know, artificially reducing your uncertainty. So, um, at my uh, plot, I'm just going to put in. Uh, I've, I've got a time point, so I'm going to ask the expert to uh, elicit an opinion at 30 months. And um, 
I'm going to ask them to, uh, you know, give me the upper and lower bounds at which um, the, you know, they feel that the survival can be within. So this is important that you explain to them that the expected survival, not like, uh, you know, uh, you know, it, 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 they might think, oh, like, well, what's the longest that one uh, individual patient might survive to? But, but actually, it's the, it's the mean survival of the population that you have to think about. So, I mean, again, this is just a very contrived example. So I'm just going to put this in at 0.1. Uh, and then I'm going to say it's uh, the highest it can be at 30 months is 0.3. Obviously, you'd be a, a bit more, um, you know, you can ask it in, more coherent ways um, and you can get the expert to think about it in, in, in ways like that but uh, just for the purpose of illustration we're gonna we're gonna keep it simple and then um, we're gonna say that the you know medians or the median probability of survival is is, is now 0.2 uh, it should be noted as well like we can change any of these uh, probabilities so like if I wanted to put this down to 0 0.0 not one I could do that um, or, you know, put this up to 0.75, it, it, it can be done. Uh, but I think most, most experts would probably want to be asked, okay, what's the lower and upper plausible bounds such that there's only a 5% chance that the expected survival is outside this interval? And then what's your kind of uh, median or best guess scenario estimate and, 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 and work, work with that? Um, so once once we have the experts' uh, opinions um, encoded, we can we can plot the update, and we can see here that um, we have uh, created a, a kind of a, um, a normal distribution uh, plot of the the experts' opinion. So we can see here that the the experts' opinion is is, is kind of centered at here at, at 0.2. And, um, you know, we don't expect it to be any really higher than 0 0.3 or any lower than 0 0.1. Um, so uh, as we can see here, uh, the next set of options are just to choose uh, the, the approach that we're going to use. So I'm going to use the frequentist approach. Uh, I can, of course, use the Bayesian approach, just but just because I just want the results instantaneously, I'm going to use the frequentist approach. Uh, I, I think like I've checked it under a number of scenarios, and you know the frequentist and Bayesian approaches usually give a very close approximation uh, to each other. And I'm going to choose my models just for the purpose of illustration. I'm only going to pick a couple of models, um, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to run the analysis. We can see here that um, you know now we have our uh, different uh, survival models. Um, we can see here that the exponential doesn't really fit the data at all well, nor does it uh, fit the expert's opinion. Um, same then, you know, log logistic seems to fit the data the best, uh, and then also fits the expert opinion. And we can kind of see this um, illustrated in our, in our model-based comparison uh, with, with AISC. So we, we can see that um, the best fitting model is the log logistic model um, because uh, you know, it fits the data well and it also fits the expert opinion, uh, followed by the Weibull model and then followed by the exponential model. Um, and so uh, we, we could also, we also might want no expert opinion. Um, so in that case, we, we might just run, run the analysis. And we see here that there hasn't been too much of a change in the expert's opinion. Um, it should be bear in mind that in this sample data set, there's like 300 or 400 observations. Uh, and because the expert opinion was, was quite relatively diffuse, um, you know, it didn't really change the results that much. Um, but it is actually quite interesting to see that um, when we don't have the expert opinion, there's this, actually the Weibull model is the best fit to, to AIC. Um, so once we incorporate our expert opinion, uh, we have more, um, you know, 
we see that the, the log logistic model actually fits the data best. Um, so uh, like, I mean, let's see if, uh, if we, if we tighten up this expert opinion, you know, we, we give it a very um, tight bounds. Hopefully it doesn't break the code. Uh, and then, yeah, this actually brings on to just this uh, scale for density argument. You can see here that it's quite uh, just because uh, the density the density is is so high, it goes off the screen. So in in this illustration, I just want to set the scale for the density to be like no point. Um, just just so that it it appears nicely on the graph. As you can see here, the, the expert opinion is much tighter. And so we can see here that now, um, you know, the, the, the results have been, have been changed as well with this uh, much tighter expert opinion. And then also the AIC, BIC um, results uh, are, are also uh, computed. Um, I just want to then look at the, the Bayesian approach. Um, so if you can see here the, the Bayesian approach, we can, we can run the analysis. This is going to take uh, considerably longer. Um, I need to put in some, you can see here on, on this, this is it running in, in, in Stan. Um, I should know that I've, I've taken a lot of uh, the functions from the serve HE package. Um, but I don't actually call the serve HE package directly. Um, so all credit goes to Gianluca and, and the co-authors on that. But I, I, I didn't actually reference this uh, or didn't uh, include it as the serve. This package is independent of that just because um, if uh, basically it takes a long time to install a package with, which requires stand code. Um, so if I require serve HE, then when you want to install install expert serve, you need to like install serve HE and then wait a while for the stand models to be installed, and then do the exact same thing for expert serve. So that's why I've kind of just set, you know, separated out the packages. Uh, a couple of minutes, please, Philip. Yep. Yeah. Um, so. Um, just wanted to show like that's pretty much the key uh, functionality. Of course, um, we can, I put all our files if we want. Um, I'm actually not gonna, yeah, so we can we can output our files. Um, I should say. Um, yeah, it should save to the working directory, but I can't check where that is now. But um, yeah, it, 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 you can save like the model files, the uh, saliva plots, uh, etc. Um, with this with this argument, so it'll save as a .rds file. And um, yeah, just the final thing to know as well. There's a few more options, so we can also um, apply different. Arms. So if we have two treatment arms, we can also do different, uh, elicit different things, uh, you know, survival difference and, and other quantities. Um, but anyway, that's, uh, that's the kind of key um, functions and uh, work through off the package. Um, you know, I hope to, over the course of the next couple of months, um, work some more on this and, and you know, you know, finalize it and, and then push push it onto the actual CRAN um, package. But uh, in the meantime, if, if anyone's interested, they can they can install it from the GitHub package. Sorry, the GitHub uh, repository. And yep, that's uh, that's my presentation. Um, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Or uh, of course, uh, after the after the presentation. Great. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Philip. That's great. It's really interesting to see how all the different options and how powerful they, 
the shiny app is. Um, it's, I'm interested in how you, how you design the interface. I mean, there's so much going on. Is there like a... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a hard one. Like, I, I yeah. wouldn't be particularly... Um, you know, I, I know a little bit about making shiny apps, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be in no way an expert. Um, there's a lot of trial and error I find. Um, mm. I think I think you try and you have to think about like, and, and this could be improved in, in, in aspects, but you, you have to think what's the most important information. Then you have to think about what can I put in different tabs. So if I wanted to, I could put, um, I mean, you can see here, if I change the number of experts, um, Sorry, not yeah, not the number of experts, the number of time points. Uh, you know, it, I automatically create a, a second tab. Um, so if, if 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 there was more information that I needed, I I could have kind of multiple tabs here. Like if I wanted an overview page, I I, I could put another tab and, uh, and 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 work from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. This is exactly. You can always improve these things. Um, in the interest of time, there's a couple of questions in the chat, but perhaps you could. Um, reply to them afterwards yeah sure i'll do that 